And right when I started this letrozole and started crushing my estrogen into the ground, all of a sudden my interest in women just completely fell off the map. What's up guys, Derek from ReplaceMorneAids.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about low estrogen versus high estrogen. So this video is about how to know if you have high or low estrogen. And first of all, diagnosing yourself without blood work is not something I recommend. In fact, I advise very strongly against it, but some people are not going to get blood work no matter what, and they haphazardly use aromatase inhibitors and without knowing where they're, if they're high or low, they'll you know, throw a Rimidex at themselves until they're at, you know, single digit estrogen levels and then experience you know like worse erectile dysfunction then think oh my estrogen must be high so then they use more Rimidex and just like you know it's just like a it's like a vicious circle so anyways i wanted to make this video to sort of at least give a framework of how i feel personally with high or low estrogen you can you know extrapolate that however you want but i'm somebody who has experience with estrogen through the fucking roof as well as estrogen in the sweet spot as well as estrogen like on the bottom like dead zone to the point where it's like holy fuck you're you know gonna get heart disease 100 if you continue with this so like i've literally manually crushed it into the ground with letrozole to dry out for um a show way back in the day and i know how everything feels when I'm high when I'm normal, when I'm low. And I thought maybe at least giving you guys an outline of what my symptoms were would potentially give you at least some sort of reference framework for if you are going to attempt to self-diagnose yourself, which I don't recommend, but at least give you a, perhaps a framework of reference to extrapolate from to then decide if you need blood work. I don't even know what I'm, it's, it's more so just like, some to educate yourself more it would be good to recognize symptoms so anyways as far as how i feel when i have high estrogen for me if my androgen levels are sufficient which they almost always are because i can manually adjust them with exogenous hrt um unless i'm doing some weird experiment with like injectable SARMs or something which i'm not going to be doing anymore but anyways my libido is fine the problem is erectile dysfunction and it's very obvious when you're like trying to get hard it's like very hard to stay hard and this is even with pde5 inhibitors if your estrogen is way too high you'll know this if you've taken a cycle before and you've had like you've used way too much test or you've used you know test with d ball or something or you know anything that could exacerbate aromatization potentially or increases the expression of aromatase or you just have a mismanaged balance of your hormone profile having a high estrogen level even when you have high androgens if your estrogen is way too high you end up in a position where your libido is good but your dick just doesn't work even if you slam a bunch of viagra and cialis it's still not functioning even where it would be normally if you were not in this position so that is to me my number one sign is libido. Like obviously everyone has their own sign. Some people are going to notice, oh, my blood pressure goes up. Some people are going to say, oh, I uh, get watery. And somehow they can tell just by water retention. For me, the sign is my dick doesn't work. My morning wood is gone, but my libido is high still. Now, as far as the sweet spot, the way I can tell the sweet spot is, first of all, I have no ED like ever. I also wake up with morning wood. If you wake up with morning wood, it's like, pretty likely that you're like close to the sweet spot at least at least based on my experience from my own blood work <coughs> excuse me low estrogen levels <laughs> as far as figuring out what low estrogen levels feel like for for me it was really obvious like some people they have you know oh my joints are dry and creaky oh i have this i have that for me oh for hair is falling out that's another thing too one of the things for me that was the biggest red flag is, I always look at my dick, to be honest. I don't look at my dick, but I look to my dick to give me signs of if shit's going wrong or not. So if I'm in the sweet spot, I have morning wood, I have no ED, I have no issues whatsoever. And this is not gonna apply if you're like a porn addict and you've like self-induced, you know, you've like desensitized yourself to reality to the point where you have ED. Cause some bodybuilders actually get that where they get like, such a fucked up high sex drive from using so many steroids that they end up, you know, addicted to porn and then their dick like doesn't even work because they're so, their dopamine system so fucked up. That is not 
you know, that's something totally irrelevant. If that is not a problem, which hopefully it's not for you, and you have, you know, like a healthy sex life in, in terms of, and you're not like a porn addict or something, you're gonna have morning wood and you're gonna have healthy, good erections with good erection quality and you're gonna be able to sustain them easily um, if you have like good sweet spot androgen to estrogen balance in terms of, in general terms, at least from, in my experience. And on the high end, if you're estrogen dominant, you end up in a position where it's like really fucking hard to keep an erection. On the low end, when your estrogen is crashed, even if you have high, if you have high androgen levels or you have normal estro- androgen levels, whatever, if you have rock bottom crashed estrogen, you just don't give a shit about anything. Or at least I didn't. I like became completely asexual to the point where I remember very vividly, this was a point in my life where I was like, I was sort of like balls deep in bodybuilding, but I was even more balls deep in like pickup, which is like, Honestly, part of what was intended to be 50% of my channel was going to be detailing all the things I went through throughout my 19 to 23 where all I did for like six days a week pretty much was I would be in the gym eating or I'd be like picking up girls and going on dates. And I basically went through this phase of my life where that's all that mattered essentially and I was just trying to rack up a ridiculous lay count to be completely honest. And the logic behind it wasn't just to be, you know, a sleaze ball. The logic behind it was that every man in their life goes through a period where they need to get laid a lot and kind of justify to themselves that they're, you know, attractive and can get laid with hot girls. And they have are able to sustain a rotation. And, you know, you have to sort of get over this hump of where you have to qualify yourself to other people and kind of like make yourself feel good about the fact that you're able to get laid. It's kind of hard to explain, but anyone who underperformed in high school can kind of get on board with what I'm saying here, where you probably have some sort of bone to pick after high school where you probably went a little bit too hard or you wish you could go too hard to kind of make up for what you missed out on. And I sort of did like a lifetime of it in like four year span. And basically I was going on dates like every single day and I was trying to get laid as much as possible. And I literally went from, I'd have like a rotate, at the time I had a rotation of three girls who I consider like eight out of tens, like pretty, it was like a pretty solid setup I had there. And this was in the, sort of like the beginning stages of it. So I was like still really into the shit and I was going on dates all the time. And right when I started this letrozole and started crushing my estrogen into the ground, all of a sudden my interest in women just completely fell off the map. I just like stopped giving a shit whatsoever. I literally stopped texting the people that I was seeing. I I just ghosted them. And this was like an unheard of thing to do when you literally (laughs) might have spent weeks working on these chicks or, you know, going out and you might have done like, I probably did like 200 cold approaches to like create that rotation. And then I just like blew it up because I didn't give a fuck anymore because my estrogen was in the ground. Like that's the kind of thing crashed estrogen does to you. Not only does your dick not really work, You just don't give a fuck. It was like at that point, my penis literally, the only function it served was urinating. That was like, I didn't give a shit about anything at that point. And I completely blew up all the relationships I was in and I did my show and blah, blah, blah. And like I dried out and like, great. But like you pretty much become asexual when your estrogen is like crashed into the ground. So to me, that was a bit of a long ramble on saying what low estrogen feels like, but basically basically to me, it felt like being like asexual essentially. You just stop giving a fuck about the opposite sex and getting laid at all. Cause it's like your body just like has no sex drive. Cause a lot of people don't realize that estrogen is largely what regulates sex drive. You get up sky high androgens, but if your estrogen's in the ground, you're not gonna wanna do anything. You're not gonna be able to get hard. You're not gonna have a libido. That's estrogen is honestly like the main driver of libido. And this is even seen in as far back as like preclinical rodent models on like castration models and whatnot. They'll find that if they use an androgen on them or a progestin or something that castrates them essentially, or, you know, shuts down the, you know, HPTA, you know, negative feedback loop, blah, blah, blah. If they don't administer estrogen concurrently with a non-aromatizable an androgen or a you know progestin or whatever that's not a substrate for aromatase that if they don't provide that exogenous estradiol in conjunction with it or some sort of estrogen that activates the estrogen receptor enough 
there's no libido. And this is why I always talk about why, you know, like DHT only cycles are stupid is because of this exact reason. Cause you start to inhibit all these, you know, physiologic functions and mechanisms in the body that are otherwise dependent on estrogen, not just fat loss, not just muscle growth and muscle retention in a deficit. But in addition to that, basic things like your penis working. So if your estrogen is in the ground, not only do you inhibit your bodybuilding progress and your body composition, but you will inevitably hurt your dick too. So obviously it's not permanent. I'm just saying that that is like the likely outcome if you unnecessarily crush your estrogen with overusing AIs. And this is why, you know, so many guys are having such bad issues now with certain HRT clinics where they get, you know, a cookie cutter doctor who doesn't understand HRT and optimization of hormones and gives them, here's your, you know, your once a week testosterone shot with your one milligram, you know, every day a Remedex or something. And it's like just baffling what some doctors are prescribing now. And then I'll get guys, you know, like emailing me for consultations and they're like, I feel like fucking shit, even though I'm on TRT. And then I'll look at it and I'll be like, dude, your doctor's a fucking idiot. And it's, you know, largely because people are getting, you know, either overusing AIs by their own, you know, lack of education, or they're getting, you know, somebody else is telling them to use AIs unnecessarily because they're an idiot. So educate yourself on the benefits of estrogen because it is needed not only for cardiovascular health, neuroprotection, muscle growth, a myriad of other functions, but in addition, your libido is dependent on it. So keeping your estrogen in the sweet spot is, I think you can tell like with fairly, you know, reasonable accuracy when your estrogen is where it should be because you can tell when things are functioning correctly. At least I can. Anyone that's doing this should be getting blood work. I'm just saying as far as how I would roughly interpret it on myself, those are the symptoms I found when I was, you know, recklessly using hormones when I was younger and didn't really know what I was doing. So anyways, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.